Okay, we had a little problem with our snow plow setup. Um, if you remember, this is an eight foot uh, truck plow I bought used for like 35 bucks on the side of the road, plow only. And this is the way I got it. it, just had holes for the skids. I put the skids in there, the shoes, and they work pretty good. But we got ice the other day. Everybody across the US there got all this snow and we got our share. And if you remember, we got the uh, ice underneath it. We had the uh, freezing rain turn to snow. And then we got like four inches or six inches on top. Well, then it froze overnight. It was going on a two day process. Well, when I went around to plow, I waited to the end. I was slamming into it, forward, backwards, forward, backwards, and uh, I broke the brackets right off. Um, and so what I did is I unhooked the plow and I used a little six foot that was right behind it. See, this just sits on here. So I lift this up, see that little hook there I cut right there. So I marked that on both sides. It's got a little slot here and it sits the weight on top of this. This of course springs forward. And then um, down here on the side, I had a pin. Well, what I want to do is take a, a tractor pin, a half inch tractor pin. Let me show you. All right, I took the blade back off and dropped it down. I had to scrape some ice off from the front of the existing plow because I used this yesterday after I broke this off. And uh, so to hook this back on, I hooked that side, but this has a hook you lift. Try not to drop it on your toe. Pick this up, bring it in and down. And there's my two marks. And pretty close. I think I'm within an eighth to my old mark here. I see pencil on both sides. And then uh, I want to see if I can locate my pin right there. And what I got is, I know they're not a hardened steel it's just a county line tractor supply half inch curve pin and what i like about them is like i said if i hit something this will bend forward and i don't really want this so rigid that if i slam into something like a little stump on the edge of the driveway or something that it either does damage back this way on the tractor or throw me through the window so uh what i I want a soft point, so if this breaks off, it doesn't bother me too much. Um, so I put the pin in like this, and then you see the old weld there. I did some chicken scratch because I didn't have the arc welder hooked up. I, uh, I you see on a recent video, I ran a, uh, I think a 40 amp power line out there so I can run the welder, and it, it's been working great. So I'm gonna use an arc weld and I could put a nice bead there and here. And then here's a washer and a pin. So when I set this up there, the bottom will just tilt in, the pin will line right up. So I'll get a clamp, clamp that on there and get that tack welded. I just thought somebody might find this interesting just making your blade go from six foot to eight foot in seconds by setting it up on there. All right, I grabbed a sip of coffee, got the welder out here. I'll put it on 90, that's good enough. I'm running 6013 rod. That's what I had on it. That's what I'll use. And then uh, I kinda wanna get some 6011. And what I wanna do is I put some vice grips on there. It's about, I don't know, I would say it's about 10 degrees out here. Kinda on the cold side, but I wanna get this fixed. I got my uh, shoes out here, if you saw them. I got two different styles. And the reason I took them off is because there was ice under that snow and I didn't want it skating above it. And that's what damaged it. If I had these shoes on, I wouldn't have damaged anything. But I was digging in just like it was earth. And uh, just broke the pins right off and bent them. But let's see if I can get an arc started here because this is a little on the rusty side. I want to slide this in to the pin is right up next to that washer and approximately centered with that hole so it goes on easy. Cover. I may not get it started here. Yeah, I got a better ground. Let's see if we got anything. I might have to get the grinder out. Maybe right there in that bolt. See if that's tight enough. Let's see what we 
we can do here. Nothing. Man, the sun out here is awful bright. I don't know if you guys have that same problem, but I know if I don't have additional light when it's bright outside, I can't see where I'm welding. I want to get a good tack on it. I'm just going to go around and get that cleaned up better. I'll get a good strong weld on that. My excuse is I'm pretty good with it I think if I can see but I should bring out like a clamp light because you know with the shield being a little dark I can't see where I am at a lot of times. a little bit ugly but we didn't grind off the old weld either not all the way I use the rod right up to nothing rods are so expensive anymore everything is Give me another one here. I think that's going to be a good strong hole though. I think I had some of these left over from that trailer welding project. I replaced part of the subframe. There. This is my best day to do this. It's cold but it's not windy. So the bead there looks pretty good. It's against the old weld. I want to get one right here. And then uh, I'll get one here across the top. The little space behind the pin, that's good. I don't want it so tight that I, you know, I can't get it on or off. That's pretty good weld. Um, I see Kleeman starting to weld now. Captain Kleeman, he's doing a good job. He's got some good equipment there. But I'm outside 10 degrees. I'm cold. I can't see it. I got to come up with excuses. I think I'll do a little bit right here. I'm not going to do it underneath probably. And I want this to be the soft spot. Like I said, this is a plow in front of a plow. I don't want to damage this one. If it bends this pin, the plow falls off. Kind of what it did down there at the end of the drive. I don't care. You know, I just do this again. Two dollar pin. Get a little bit here. on it and this whole side here is ugly because that's the old one that new one whoop, that new one right there that's pretty good 
And the top one looks really good. I'd say that's that's darn near done right now. I think I'll uh, use up the rest of this rod piece here. Call it quits on this side. And we'll do the same on the other so I can get using it again. There you go. If I want to grind that, it'd look all right. I don't care what it looks like. The whole back of this plow, I don't know what so. I think somebody put one of these guides on here. And I bought it from a, I think it was a farm. And, um, but they just got rid of it. They threw it out front, 35 bucks. And I said, I'm the perfect guy for that. And our shoes will go right up inside here, whichever style I want to use. But until I get all this ice scraped down, I don't want to put them on yet. So you get the general idea. I'm gonna go over and do the same on the other side. Yeah, my fingers are getting numb. I have a little more sip of my coffee before it's frozen here. I just wanna get it done today. <sighs> okay, tell me in the comments what you guys think of this idea. Um, this blade six feet wide is awful small for this tractor. And um, the factory eight foot, or the A factory foot would be pretty expensive, I would assume, if they were available. But I got like very little money in this. So I bought this pin, washer slides up, slide this in. I'm, I'm welded to the plow, which is pretty heavy. And this is quarter inch steel backer on it. Slide this in, bring that into touch and that's it, you know. Snap my pliers on here. I can get a good grip on it. Line it up in the center of the hole pretty good so it'll go back on. And then give me another rod going here. Can't wait to go in and warm up. Springs are coming. Don't look at my bald head. All right, so if we just tack this side, this lined up good. Get that halfway straight. Cover. Again. I guess I'm just going to go for it here instead of just trying to tack it with my eyes closed. All right. that look oh, I went past it a little bit but that looks all right I just have uh, have to have extra light I should have brought out an LED light to shine on there a spotlight so that I can see better just in between starting the weld and, and getting it going you know penetration on that. I burn these rods right down to nothing. 6013. Probably should have 6011. Bump the heat up 120 or something, but this will work.
halfway on both. That's a nice looking puddle there. This one is a, is a little bit that's good. I'll get a little on the front edge of the blade here. I don't want it so hot that it blows through. I'll burn my paint off. That's pretty good. And I'll get a little dab under here. You can try to do a little bit of a circle and push it. It kind of pushes the slag out of your way. So that's what you want to call it. Throw my piece out of the driveway. Got a little bubble there that I can grind off or tap off, but that's going to be on there. And let me know what you think of that, guys. So all I do is I come up here. Pull that pin, pull the washer off. We'll go around the front on both sides. Go around the front, just lift up one end, drop it on the ground. I can lower the blade down so it's just about flush with the ground and then it doesn't even tip over. This will keep the blade standing up, um, that shoe area. So if I just unhooked and set it down, it stands up on its own anyway and I drive up to it. The only thing with this blade is I can't tilt it like I could a bucket. If I could tip it, I could go under almost like a quick connect, but this is a low budget, like, you know, five bucks worth of pins or whatever, four or five bucks, and then uh, a couple welder rods, $35 blade. That extra, you know, two feet, eight foot blade now, a huge difference going up and down the driveway. I can, you know, when it's normal snow and not ice under it, but um, down, back, all done, go park it. Before it was down and back and down and back. It always fell off the side. The back tire would catch this pile that come off on either side. And it just, you know, it took forever. So I tend to put this up and I just put the bucket on the front of the tractor and use the snow blower. Otherwise I take the snow blower off, put the back blade on. I really enjoy having this up front where I can see what's going on. It's a hydraulic up, down, turn, left, right. I just think it's great. So uh, I'm going to put it to the test and see if I can get through another snowstorm with it. All right, let me give you a little demonstration, see if it works now. And uh, you got to remember, we got that ice underneath it. So this snow is very hard, hard to move now. And uh, so the blade's going to want to lay over if I hit something deep. And um, there is a lock on this where I can put a pin in so the blade will stay stationary without the springs. But I do want that softness so I don't hurt anything. Let's see if that works.
Well, the pins are holding up real good. And this is, like I said, this is a different kind of snow than we normally have. Usually we get snow or rain. This time we got ice underneath it. You can see the chunks under here. Look at this, this has a whole, one whole piece here. It's very hard to plow. And uh, having these springs on here allows us to go right over. And right there I can put a bolt in it, pin in it, and it'll lock it up. But I don't want to break them pins off. So I think what I'll do, I'll just be careful and I'll finish the rest of this up tomorrow. I'm cold. It'll be a little bit warmer tomorrow, a couple degrees. And uh, if you like the content, remember to subscribe. And uh, we'll show you another video. We'll, we'll talk to you soon.